I'd like to talk a little bit about about YouTube uh, specifically. Now you started on well, 16 millimeter tape, I suppose. Or we started with uh, high band eight uh, mm -hmm. broadcast tape. Okay. So that was tapes, which magnetic tape rather than film, 16 millimeter film. We started with tape, and then moved up to digital tapes, and now of course digital cameras and editing so yeah. much easier. And we joined YouTube. A little late, I guess, 2009, we started the channel, but we weren't using it to put new content up because we were selling all of our content on television. Only. Your existing stuff, yeah. yeah. The, well, the existing t broadcasters who would buy our TV show wouldn't buy it if we were giving it away for free on YouTube. Yeah, and that's so, true. That's true. You can't just give it on YouTube and then try to sell it to TV stations. So, so, so how big was your camera before? Uh, well, you know, shoulder cam. Sort of, you generally hold it on the shoulder and look through it like that. Oh, yeah. And so what are you using now? What kind of gear? Because when that went into an underwater thing, it weighed about 35 pounds. It was yeah. uh, quite well, a lump thing to hump it out of the dinghy and get it in the water. Yeah. So we really only started by putting up trailers for the TV shows. And by the way, we are still producing for television. Um, we do episodes on YouTube, but then they later become segments for the travel programs that we do for TV because for a mass television audience, we can't get so much into the details of the sailing life and boat handling. And it's mm -hmm. got to be more about the destinations and so sure, on. So sure. We've been able to balance that way because before with television sailors would sometimes get frustrated because it was more about the destinations and not enough about bottom paint and you know things that they <laughs> yeah. wanted want to fix the head so yeah. uh, you know so, so what, you're, what what kind of cameras are you using now uh, we've got a mix of cameras i mean we have a couple of drones and we've got a few gopros of course because they're wonderful dis semi-disposable cameras yeah. and then we've got a, a a7 which is a sony which really good in low light yeah. Uh, we use that mainly for interviews and stuff. So yeah. we've given up on the biggest cameras anymore. They're, they were so great for the audio sections. They're, they're so good for recording mm -hmm. audio, but, but yeah. the uh, smaller cameras are more versatile. for. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you're using lavalier mics then or just shotgunning or how are you doing? Uh, well, we have everything. We have wireless, wireless lav mics. We have corded lav mics. We have uh, fixed microphones like, like our... Yeah, that's what studio. we use. Studio. Yeah, this kind of studio one here. Yeah. Sure. Um, and uh, sound is very, very important. You can have great video, but if your sound is bad, it's the overlooked part yeah. of it that so many people don't don't bother to try to to make it work. Yeah. So like we don't have our mic hooked up for this, which we probably should. But I hope the sound is okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just as I said that, our oven alarm went off, so I'm just gonna exit out and turn <laughs> that off. Buzzing in the back. Well, let Paul. I'll let Paul talk to. Let Paul talk to. No, this is a real life interview, guys. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, you're going to have a warm lunch by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is that's going on in the oven up there. Yeah, but no, it's, I think audio is a really important part of getting it right, and, and I know that we spend a long time trying to get good sound in the first place with a bunch of gear for it. Uh, mostly lav and, and wind, wind uh, covers. So, uh, where's, there's like the, the cover for one of our smaller mics that can go on the camera, a, a wind sock kind of thing, and then a little tiny little puff ball of a thing that goes onto a lavalier mic. Yeah. Paul calls that the hedgehog because it's yeah. a strange <laughs> color. We've had tons highlights. of these things, but this is a. There's a typical little lab, so you want to pin it near your neck or, or in for sailing, we're hiding it under clothing so that it gets a bit of wind protection. Oh, and yeah. then a puffy little puff ball can go on, go on top of it. Make it a bit closer. So that the, yeah. 
so that the wind is kept away from it and that gets gets you a much better sound outside yeah I'm putting up a video just today that's going to have it's got mm -hmm. another little bit of with this one used in it and the hedgehog on it so that yeah. i think you can get rid of almost if you hide it in clothing you can take it out in 30 knots of wind yeah so it's an audio so Long Island behind us there. It's about another 30 miles onwards to Georgetown Harbor entrance. Great Exuma. Should get into before sunset. The waves are getting pretty big. It's flying 25, gusting a little higher, maybe gusting to 30 today. Wow. And we spend a lot of time when we're editing before it goes up on YouTube. We edit in Final Cut and we spend probably a day and a half on one show just doing audio fixes, mm -hmm. just audio fixes. Really? As well as oh. all the other stuff we do on the show, but, but yeah. just to fix, to try to repair the audio and fix it, mix it correctly, get the levels proper. And, yeah, and, and sometimes we music. have to loop it, uh, which means we the sound is just so bad and you can't hear the narration or repair it. So we basically record what we said on location and you have to match the energy and the performance and the lips and uh, I've I've it, noticed that actually from your videos yeah that it's almost People indiscernible but there's that's a, the idea it's it's done in Hollywood does it all the time most movies are are done that way yeah but it's a lot of work to put it all back in because you end up cutting all the words apart and yeah. trying to slide them back and forth to to put the plosives the sound of them P's and stuff like that which you can see and it looks wrong when you see the lips aren't moving the right way so yeah 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 that that is a very last we That's, I would put a hundred yeah. of these on the budget to try to if to I lose them every day yeah. to avoid doing those yeah 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 it's just a patch if we have to well I, I probably no one else would notice but I'm watching for for technical you know <laughs> no, so you're right. most yeah. people don't notice it's it's yeah. only other no. videographers that yeah. notice and with YouTube, well, comments so the, so, on YouTube gives everyone the ability to put in their two cents. About that's right. So the process now, uh, the process before was you just come home with this pile of tapes that you would weed through uh, over the course of months and produce mm -hmm. a, a television show. Now we'd fly home and we'd have this, you know, handful of tapes that we'd have to take through security and x-ray and it's like this is our whole winter's work yeah and if you yeah. blow it with the radar the the x-ray yeah and that was kind it of was scary, always it? scary so we have backup tapes that we would ship home to our families and, wow uh, huh. so now now one of the biggest challenges is just how many cameras we have like we used to always have two cameras we would we would have a big camera yeah. which was our normal camera and then a small one which we used for temporary or underwater or second but camera. now we've got something like seven so when you add up all the cameras and try to organize all the footage from all of those many yeah. terabytes for just from a couple of months of shooting. Yeah, and getting all the locations yeah. batched together. Because the 4K, we're shooting, we've been shooting in 4K for years and yeah. the size of the files in 4K are bigger. And yeah. But it's amazing what you yeah. can do with your phone now. Like Paul has the new iPhone yeah, 11. Yeah, the phone is good. The iPhone yeah. 11 is a really good picture. We met a couple in... Uh, somewhere in Florida, I forget where, that uh, they've got, they're French, uh, so they're, they're a French-speaking channel, but it's called La Voile L'Orange, mm. and they bought a, a really tough but beat-up old boat, this young couple, and they've done everything with their iPhone. The quality is spectacular, like, like movie grade, you know? Yeah. So, oh, cinem yeah. yeah, the cinematography is spectacular. Yeah. The camera is all on their phone. Section is incredible mm -hmm. in the yeah. iPhone. I and got the new one, and I I do not consider that I bought a phone at all. I would have never bought a phone. Yeah. I bought a camera. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has a free phone. Yeah. <laughs> when it rings, it kind of surprises. I go, what the heck? Him. It's making a noise. What am I supposed to do with this? Thing? <laughs> the camera's ringing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's got a dual feature, so you know, for vlogging, you can be talking to it but at the same time it's recording what's on the other side of the camera what yeah. you're looking at so that's yeah, both, yeah. Like both yeah so it's got a 360 thing going on uh it's Almost. well i guess function it's not really because it's it's a regular lens so this it's using the front lens 
and then the back lens it's recording you with two lenses yeah but it's only 45 degree angle but yeah. the, so it's kind of weird you have to aim it i would have to aim it directly at you and then it would show you in, in one and me on the other neat wow well, well, who well. can think of all this stuff yeah well. and the wide angle feature yeah. has been really good too there's yeah. always something to spend the money on oh, for, yeah. for more camera <laughs> yeah. gear and more more sound gear more camera gear more yes. underwater photo gear more tripod. Yeah. When we arrived here in the Berry Islands back in 1989, we found this lovely anchorage deserted, just as it is today, and even now it appears totally unchanged. Back then we had our six-foot draft sailboat two-step and anchored here in the outer harbour. Now with better charts and a shoal draft boat, we can anchor in the shallows further back where it's much more protected and there's less swell. <laughs> when we first started, we had to make a decision about uh, kind of matching our gear with our capabilities, you know. So uh, right from the start, we were very conscious about producing something that would not be suitable for television, but just point of view, right. you know. Yeah. So as if the viewer is there with the movement and the wind noise and everything, we, we tried to leave that in, that little bit of out of focus occasionally. Mm -hmm. Like all that stuff, we just left it in intentionally to create that feel of being present in the moment you know yeah uh, no but, great effect but you, uh, the, part of that was our skill level too because i we don't have the camera skills that you two probably have or the editing skills so we've kind of kept the software really simple and the gear really simple you know? well i think that's very wise and uh, you know the more you do it the more you learn and you can incorporate new equipment or yeah. whatever i mean we did that oh sure people you know people watch our dvds the early ones you can really see the progression well those and cameras were a lot more manual like they didn't have autofocus mm -hmm, yeah. and they didn't have auto exposure even so you're yeah. organizing exposure and and trying to focus checking focus all the time and mm -hmm. and there's no stabilization so you're putting it on tripods and yeah, sure. We're trying to handhold it with a big pole yeah. or something. So Much yeah. more intentional. We've come a long way. It's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're yeah. still producing our DVDs. Um, people can download them now too. But um, yeah. we've been hearing from lots of people in lockdown that it's really helping get them through. Yeah. Half hour episodes. We've got 130 episodes now. Wow. Uh, so if people are interested. Uh, we'll give you the link and. Yeah. Uh, We've got a, a so, special one. Uh, we'll Chris, Chris will put the link on for yeah, you. Yeah. If yeah. you send it to him, he'll put it on. Okay. Put Thank you. Thank so how many YouTube videos do you have now? Um, I don't know. I haven't yeah. counted them. We haven't done them as episodes on YouTube. So I don't really, I mean, we put them on, but yeah. we haven't numbered the episodes. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I get, we've been doing YouTube quite seriously now since, I guess, 2014. Mm -hmm. We started pushing harder on YouTube instead of just putting trailers on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're building a channel and that's been fun to do and yeah yeah it's and, great to be part of the youtube community as well yeah. like to speak with other videographers like yourself who understand the challenges of it and the joys of sharing this lifestyle yeah. like we all are so blessed to have time on boats and um, i hope we get back on board that the is boat so too. true yeah yeah um yeah. you do are you still involved in magazines uh yeah, we still write for Canadian Yachting and Cruising World. and You're just doing something for Yachting Monthly. Right? Yes, yeah, Yachting yeah. Monthly in the UK. Uh, Cheryl, yeah, I, sorry. I remember seeing a photograph of you, and I forget what magazine it was in, but it was when we first started sailing, too. You were in a mud bath. You were in... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was, yeah, that was Canadian Yachting. It was... Was um, it Canadian Yachting? Yep, yeah, yeah. I was the only uh, centerfold <laughs> CY. <laughs> <laughs> totally covered in mud in um, the Balearic Islands. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I remember that photograph. I thought, oh my gosh, that looks so wonderful. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. You'll, you'll have to send us that photo so we can use it as a thumbnail. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't even know if we still have it. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure true, we right? do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen. Uh, we're we're almost at an hour now, so we, we yeah, should, this is, uh, it's been really great getting to talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah. it's been good, and we really appreciate the uh, opportunity. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. We appreciate Lovely. what you're doing for us and everyone else. I, I've enjoyed the other interviews and, yeah. and the projects you put on your channel. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with everyone. Well, thank you. It's been a real honor to talk to the two of you. And yes. Fair winds in whatever you yes. do. And you cheers, too. everybody out yeah. there in the audience. I hope to so. see you on the water soon. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. cheers.